My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this third Sunday of January, here in the Philippines, we celebrate a very peculiar feast proper to the church in the Philippines, the feast of the Holy Child or the Santo Nino. When one confronts the lectionary for this Sunday, the gospel is supposedly that of John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The story of how Jesus revealed himself through the transformation of water into wine and how the disciples believed in that first miracle that Jesus did. It was an act of revelation, continuing the theme of the baptism of the Lord, that Jesus now is revealed constantly as the fulfillment of God's promise. But for us here in the Philippines, we read from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. The gospel that we have heard during the Holy Family Sunday, even if the text is different from that of John, the logic of revelation, the logic of faith, still becomes clear in this reading. Jesus is revealed to the Philippines as the child, the first icon and image together with the cross through which we encounter Jesus Christ. And the church puts forth its faith, adhering with commitment of heart and of mind to this revelation. When we read, therefore, the gospel coming from Luke, we begin to see that through these texts, we are taught about who Jesus is. He is the child given to us who grew in wisdom, who grew in age, and in the favor of God and of man. I think this must be the focus in this liturgy, how we understand Jesus Christ. He is the child born for us, given to us, so that each one of us may become likened to Him and be pleasing to God the Father. It's very interesting to note that He did not only increase in wisdom, He also increased in favor before God and men. The Greek word charis, employed also by St. Paul in his letters, does not only mean that he was gracious before men and God, that he was kindly disposed to them, but more so, charis would mean being fitted with all the graces necessary so that he will be able to fulfill the mission that he needs to accomplish. Growing therefore in favor before God and men would also mean he is now prepared to fulfill his task. He was born and called for. Jesus now was reared. He was educated. He was formed in order to be docile to God's plan. But it did not happen overnight. It was the effect of how the family taught him and formed him. Here, Jesus was reared in a family that was properly given by God in order to prepare his son, the house of Mary and Joseph. And if we look at the gospel, this family is characterized in this way. It was a worshipful family. Every year, they went to Jerusalem to fulfill the dictates of the law. It is as if Luke wishes to teach us that Jesus was formed in this way, that his parents were very inclined to teach him what it means to fulfill the will of God. You know, every life is always a mission. And the fulfillment of this mission is taught beginning in the family, in the home where we are reared. But a family is only capable of doing so if it is a family that is capable of worshiping God. If God is placed at the center of the home, then all members of that particular home will begin to see that God has a mission 
given to each one of them. A life of prayer, therefore, a life of worship, they are necessary so that one and those members of the family may truly understand what God wants from them. That is how Luke looks at the family of Mary, Joseph, and of Jesus. They always went to Jerusalem to fulfill the dictates of the law. When Jesus answered his mother, Don't you know that I have to be about my father's business? This was not a disrespectful answer. On the contrary, it reflects what Jesus understood and what he has been formed. Here, Jesus now was taught that life is all about the business of God. It's all about fulfilling God's plan in his life. The Father's plan, therefore, matured in the heart of this child, in that home of Joseph and of Mary. If we try to reflect on this, if we look at the young people of today, the lives of young people today, all of them are vocations and missions coming from God, the fulfillment of which must always be considered by homes and by families. But just like the home of Mary and Joseph, it would not be possible, not unless families are willing to worship God, to be faithful to God, to be obedient to His plans. At the end of the day, when we look at the story of Jesus and the story of Mary, Joseph, and their family, you will see that when a family fulfills the plan and the will of God, it transforms them into a beautiful home. Just like in the story of Luke, towards the end, Jesus was obedient and Mary had a discerning heart. A good family, therefore, always determined to do the will of God. They are composed of members, children who are willing to obey, and parents who are willing to to know and to fulfill the will of God in their lives. As we celebrate this feast of the Santo Nino, we look at Jesus, favored by God and men, that is to say, fulfilling his mission with fidelity and faithfulness. But all of these he learned from the family, from that home, because in that home, God desires that he be formed so that he will be faithful to the plan laid down. I pray that each one of us, all our families, may truly understand our vocations, our missions. But we can only do so if we are also willing to worship God, if we are willing to put God at the center of all our lives, of all our business, our visions and plans. This is Father Ulrich of the Rogationist Fathers wishing you the peace and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ.